Hi, everyone. Uh, it's a great pleasure to uh, be in this series and uh, to introduce you to blueberry breeding at Auburn University. So I'm Su Shan Ru. I started my position as the blueberry breeder and small fruit breeder uh, in 2021. So the program is just over one year old as of today. And the goal is to develop elite blueberry cultivars for Alabama and with a broader application to neighboring regions as well. Um, so you might be wondering why we want to focus on blueberry. Um, blueberry is considered a super fruit uh, for its uh, rich content of antioxidants and many other health, health promoting compounds. And the, the global industry has been increasing continuously in the past 50 years, and it's projected to continue to grow. Um, with that being said, Alabama is actually in a great position to increase our blueberry production, considering uh, our neighboring states like North Carolina, Georgia, and Florida, which are the major blueberry producers in, in the United States. In 2021, uh, blueberry industry in Georgia created a cash value of $99 million, and that crop value is about uh, above $50 million in North Carolina and Flor Florida as well. On the other hand, the blueberry production in Alabama is really marginal compared to those three states. And with very similar environments, uh, there's great potential for us to increase blueberry production and the cash value of this crop in Alabama. So the current situation of blueberry production is most of the production is on small uh, UPIC farms and heavily relied on rabbit eye species. And on the other hand, southern highbush cultivars have be become the dominant cultivars in the southeast uh, industry for its early maturity, better fru fruit quality, and longer shelf life. For the same reason, Southern High Bush have much higher market share in the wholesale market and also tend to have higher price because of its maturity time and the better fruit quality. So a lot of growers are actually interested in adopting Southern High Bush cultivars. And a few of them I talked to have actually experimented growing Southern High Bush uh, on their own farms. But overall, the success has been limited uh, due to several challenges. So the first challenge is spring frost. If we look at weather data in Alabama, uh, there's frequent frost events in January and February and at least one frost event in March. So a lot of southern high bush cultivars uh, have a uh, low chill requirement, which means they would flower early, like in January, February. And last year, some of the southern high bush cultivars even started flowering in November and December. So that means they face tremendous challenge uh, and risk for frost. So uh, as of um, this year, uh, Alabama, Georgia, and Mississippi actually encountered one of the worst frost events in history. Uh, on March 12th and 13th, the temperature dropped to 24 degrees Fahrenheit or even lower in some parts with a high wind speed of 30 miles per hour. So the combination of low temperature and high wind speed made frost protection very difficult. And so these pictures are shared by uh, Mr. Jimmy Ferguson in South Alabama. And you can see the damage to the flower buds after the frost on the right hand side. So in general, the crop loss was estimated to range between 20% to even 100% in parts of the three states and parts of North Carolina as well. And quite a few farms in Georgia lost the entire crop due to this frost. So the take home message is 
it is super, super important to consider frost protection if you want to grow sun on high bush. It could be overhead irrigation, which is the most common and effective approach adopted in Georgia and Florida. Almost all the commercial production, out, uh, outdoor production adopted overhead irrigation. However, it is expensive to establish and it does require a very large amount of water resources to run the system effectively. So for growers which lack those resources, um, some farmers, local farmers like Dr. Arley Powell also developed this low cost, low tunnel structure where you can throw the frost blanket over the tunnel prior to a frost event. It has been quite effective and uh, affordable for small scale production. Even if you don't have any structure set up uh, for small, small scale production, simply throw the frost blankets over the plants can also reduce frost damage. Uh, however, if there's no frost protection um, uh, methods adopted, it is super important to uh, choose cultivars which can tolerate spring frost better, meaning those ones either bloom later, um, late in March or after March, or some cultivars who can bounce, by, bounce back and recover after frost events. So another challenge is the uh, rest, uh, strict uh, requirement for soil and water pH. So southern high bush is more sensitive to high pH than rabbit eye. Its ideal soil pH level is between 4.5 and 5.5 um, um, uh, compared to rabbit eye, uh, which can tolerate a little bit higher soil pH. Southern high, high bush would suffer from high pH um, uh, showing uh, kinds of uh, disease symptoms and uh, iron deficiency. So it is very important to do soil test and water test before planting. And also uh, the use of a large amount of bark on raised beds is also helpful together with some reduce, uh, pH reducing fertilizers. And if you have high pH water, uh, irrigation water on your farm, it is also important to consider lower water pH with uh, sulfuric acid through uh, injector system. And another challenge faced by southern high bush production is diseases and stresses. Um, you can see these pictures were taken from a blueberry research farm uh, in, uh, at University of Georgia last year. So this field was deserted for two years. And you can see on the left, the rabbit eye cultivars plants are still doing relatively well, but southern high bush plants are almost gone. So a famous blueberry scientist, Dr. Jared Kruer, once said, uh, southern high bush is a crop looking for somewhere to die. So it's a vivid expression of how vulnerable southern high bush is to diseases and stresses. So um, that being said, growing southern high bush requires a rigorous spray program and also careful cultural management. Um, and another uh, challenge up on top of those is the lack of cultivars specifically developed for the local environments of Alabama. In the past, there has been uh, breeding programs in our uh, almost every neighboring state supplying their growers with uh, cultivars uh, adapted to their local environments. Uh, Alabama hasn't had any breeding efforts before the establishment of this breeding program. That means we don't, the growers here don't have cultivars specifically, specifically developed for their uh, environment. So the goal of this breeding program is to evaluate and develop new breeding, uh, 
new blueberry cultivars for Alabama uh, with hope to serve both small scale and large scale producers. Specifically, we want to improve southern highbush for better spring frost tolerance, soil adaptability, disease resistance, and also better fruit quality. For rabbit eye, um, the top priority are uh, early maturity, better fruit quality, as well as disease resistance. So blueberry breeding is a very tedious and time consuming process, starting from making crosses from two parents. It takes 10 to 15 years to eventually re release new cultivars. If we are extremely lucky and work very hard and efficiently, there's a chance to reduce that time to seven to eight years. But in general, that's still a very long time. Um, um, with that being said, uh, great uh, accomplishments have been made in the breeding program in terms of germplasm introduction and crosses and so on. So uh, I've been diligently working with other breeders across the country to introduce the most advanced materials to our breeding program. So, so far we have introduced parental materials from University of Georgia and other uh, resources and uh, using those materials, I was able to make uh, the first season of crosses this spring. And you can see the, um, these are the, the, the berries of some of the parental materials. The materials we have, they tend to have very large berries, uh, firm and very tasty with a high level of sugar and a balance of sugar and, and acidity. And uh, so with this collection of material, materials, we're hopeful to develop something unique and elite for our local growers. In addition to introducing parental materials, I've been also working on introducing uh, seedling populations created from biparental crosses. So we were able to introduce um, uh, 25 seedling populations from University of uh, Georgia, and thousands of seedlings have been germinated and maintained in the greenhouse. Uh, to uh, be evaluated later on in the field. So the ability to start with these seeding populations will put us ahead of our timeline for at least two to three years. Um, and so even with the advance uh, in this breeding program. Oh, my uh, I think I ordered some stuff last night. It's still, uh, it's a long-term investment for breeding. Uh, in the short term, the program also f works on evaluating existing uh, cultivars and selections from other breeding programs. And the first thing to do uh, is to look at the weather data of Alabama and our neighboring states to know exactly what cultivars in which region would work well for different parts of Alabama. So if we look at the weather data for four um, uh, regions in Alabama, starting from the very north, uh, the Coleman region to the north, uh, the south, uh, the Bruton region. So in Coleman, uh, the average chill chilling hour is about 1700 hours. Uh, a year and in central Alabama that ranged from 1100 to uh, 1300 and in South Alabama it's about 800 hours. And Now, if we look at the chilling hours of North Carolina, it is uh, 1300 hours, it's very close to central Alabama, uh, which is Clinton, a shorter area. And it's kind of surprising that uh, even uh, North Carolina is much 
to the north than uh, North Alabama, the chill hours in North Carolina is still much lower than Coleman, Alabama. So that tells us if you're a, a grower in the central Alabama, it's good to look at cultivars perform well in South uh, southern region of North Carolina um, to make the reference. Uh, however, if you're a grower in the North Alabama, uh, you would prefer some uh, cultivars that's more cold hardy than cultivars used in uh, North Carolina. And then if we look at the weather data from uh, South Mississippi, um, it is um, a little bit lower than central Alabama, than shorter. So uh, in general, if for farmers in central Alabama, a good reference would be uh, South Mississippi and South uh, Southern region of North Carolina. And if we look at the weather data of uh, South Georgia, which is the major production region of blueberry in the Southeast, uh, it is quite similar to Bruton, Alabama. So if you're a grower living in the South Alabama, um, simply looking at what cultivars perform well in South Georgia, that would give you a uh, very good in the, uh, information on what cultivars you can use in your region. It's very likely those cultivars used in Georgia would perform similarly in your region as well. Uh, on the other hand, the chill hours in Florida is in, gen in general much lower in most parts of Alabama. So it requires additional caution to introduce materials from Florida. Um, so that's the sum estimation based on weather data. Eventually, we uh, still need to test those cultivars in Alabama in order to know how exactly they perform in the local environments. So we have worked out uh, material transfer agreements to introduce materials from all those regions and test them in two locations of Alabama, one at E.B. Smith, which is central Alabama, and one at the Bruton Research Station, which is south Alabama. So these are the list of cultivars we'll, we will be uh, evaluating. Uh, uh, we will have quite a few cultivars from Florida, some Revidai cultivars from uh, Georgia, uh, a new handover, a new uh, southern highbush cultivar from North Carolina, Gumbo Bradwell from Mississippi, and a few uh, cultivars from Oregon, Fall Creek. And we will also look at advanced selections from the public breeding programs as well. So the field had in you know, both locations have been established and half of the plants have been planted in the field. And we're still waiting for the other half uh, of the plants to arrive and plant them in the fall. And overall, the plants are doing well in both locations. Uh, I wanna share with you the picture of Bruton Station uh, where we have uh, relatively high soil and water pH. So we have to, uh, we need to install um, injector system to amend so, uh, water pH with sulfuric acid. So um, the uh, process of uh, working out the right amount of sulf sulfuric acid into the water has not been that smooth. So our um, uh, station manager is still uh, working on lowering water pH to the ideal range, uh, but that like once the system is established, that will also serve as a template for our local growers to adopt for high bush production. And although it takes uh, about uh, one or two years for the plants to fully develop and for us to collect uh, reliable data, um, this year we do have some observations of berries from some of the uh, mature, uh, older rabbit eye plants uh, at Evis Smith. So uh, Crore and Titan are known uh, to have large berries and there uh, are several 
selections, which are offspring of the two cultivars, also inherited the large berry traits. And you can see the berry size are uniform and very large. Uh, some of them are even bigger than the quarter. And but some selections do show uh, some tendency of splitting after rain, which is a trait uh, in uh, Titan as well. So we'll do a careful evaluation on splitting and fruit quality and other traits in the upcoming years. And in, in addition to improving um, cultivars for uh, fruit quality, uh, another focus of the breeding program is to uh, develop disease resistant cultivars, it's, uh, it's very, especially for Botrysteria stemblate. So uh, if you uh, observe any like uh, disease symptoms similar to stem blight. It usually is uh, dried stems, dried leaves, or the entire death of the plants. Um, please feel free to reach out to me and uh, my uh, lab can do a free disease test for you. So the goal of the program is to um, uh, isolate the causative pathogens for stem blight and eventually to test cultivars for resistance for this uh, disease. So that will be um, all of my presentation and I want to give my thanks to the breeders, collaborators, uh, our station managers and extension specialists, especially uh, our growers in Alabama and even uh, neighboring regions. It's been humbling uh, for me to work for you and I'm super grateful for your support and trust. So my role here is to serve our uh, blueberry community. So if you have any challenges or there are things you want me to uh, work on, uh, please feel free to let me know and I will do my best. Um, 